What I'd like to do now is sort of go over in general the current guidelines that are out there for both urologists and the medical oncology world. And so we know that recently the AUA came out with their most recent set of guidelines, and we know that NCCN obviously um, has, their, has their set. So, Neil, you've been pretty involved in, in discussing this over, over the past couple of years. Can you expand a little bit on you know, the current AUA guidelines, how we got there, what's involved, and you know, what, what they're currently saying? Yeah, so um, I think f to the credit of the AUA CRPC Guidelines Committee, which took several years to put together and they were announced for the first time in uh, May of 2013, uh, Mike Cookson ran that program and, and still does. They've done a great job in creating these six index cases. The six index cases I think are very helpful for urologists, medical oncologists, radiation oncologists to think about the transition from patients who are M0 CRPC, as you said earlier, rising PSA, T level less than 50, radiographically negative, and as they advance to progressive disease. And the parameters that they looked at were uh, presence or absence of radiographic finding of disease, typically CT scan or bone scan, but it can be other uh, advanced diagnostic modalities. And then performance status, good performance status versus bad performance status. And then the other uh, delineating factor was whether they had received or not received um, docetaxel chemotherapy. And so there are really these six cases, index cases, based upon those factors. And within each one of those cases, there's a recommendation as to the level of evidence. And this is where they did a, a really a tremendous amount of work, looking at all the published literature and saying if something met level evidence A versus C, A being the highest. And there's a sort of correlation to that with how the NCCN looks at giving their guidelines. But calling it um, a little bit different with level one versus uh, below. So an A is the best, and B also can even uh, end up with a, a standard recommendation. So if you look at cases one through six, the different therapeutics that are available, whether they're oral or IV, get various recommendations based upon all the published literature. And interestingly, um, right now, a year later, they've changed the recommendation and will be announced at AUA in 2014 at, at this current meeting. They've actually now included radium-223 as a standard for recommendation both before and after chemotherapy. So, so Neil, so, so for the AUA guidelines, it's my understanding, as you appropriately stated, that their in order to get to their index patients, they went through all the published literature, and it really was truly evidence-based looking at all these specific articles referencing who, who they thought would be treated. Now, Mike.